This land is your land. This land is my land. From California to New York Island. From Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. Yeah, this land was made for you and America was made for you and me. It wasn't made for Washington. It wasn't made for Wall Street. It wasn't made for Hollywood. Small elites should not be deciding for the whole country what the law should be. What we collectively decide should be the supreme law of the land because this land was made for you and me. The American government was an experiment that put the political philosophy of the Enlightenment into practice. That philosophy posits that it is self-evident that each individual has an absolute property right in his or her own person or body, and therefore each individual should be free to do with themselves and their body whatever he or she pleases, free from coercive interference from anyone else. Additionally, whatsoever an individual removes out of nature and transforms with his or her labor is also the exclusive possession of that individual. But because human nature is motivated mostly by passion rather than reason, people naturally love liberty for themselves but do not exhibit the discipline to refrain from seeking dominion over others. This mutual exclusivity creates what Thomas Hobbes, one of the Enlightenment political philosophers, famously described as a war of every man against every man. In such condition, there is no place for industry, because the fruit thereof is uncertain. No agriculture, no navigation, no arts, no letters, no society. And which is worst of all, continual fear and danger of violent death and the life of man, solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. Hence, in order to secure the advantages of peace, there came into being an implicit agreement among individuals to place a restraint upon themselves. Individuals would relinquish their natural liberty to use force upon one another, delegating the power to use force solely to government. The legitimate authority of all government is a delegation of power, granted to it by the people. But the sovereign power of any legitimate government resides in the general will, or collective preferences, of the majority of individuals constituting a society or nation. And that sovereignty, though it may be delegated in part and for a time, can never be surrendered. The founders inscribed this theory of government into the founding documents of the American Republic. The Declaration of Independence emphatically asserts, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it, and to institute new government. Laying its foundation on such principles, and organizing its powers in such form, as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. The preamble to the Constitution reaffirms the Declaration's elevation of popular sovereignty as ultimately the supreme law of the land. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, 
ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity to ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Hence, the founding principle of America subordinates the entire government, the President, the Congress, the Supreme Court, all the independent federal agencies, all the state and local governments, and all bureaucracies derived from these institutions of government to the general will of we the people, who possess the sovereign authority to alter or abolish the government in whole or in any portion at will. We the people hold the position and authority of all our elected officials with the same dominion fire and brimstone preacher Jonathan Edwards described the Lord's dominion over sinners. God holds you over the pit of hell, much as one holds a spider over the fire. Whether the founders sincerely believed in the sovereignty of the people, or whether they co-opted Enlightenment political philosophy for no other reason than as a convenient rationalization for their break with England, can never be definitively known. Yet the ultimate reason is irrelevant, because the sovereignty of we the people is the official record that none can efface. It is popular sovereignty that gives the American government its only credible claim to legitimacy, based on the American government's own founding documents.